Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. New Lego set. Hi guys, welcome back to the janitor. Turns out I'm not the only one that's creative on this platform. So in honor of two subscribers, I will be doing a giveaway of my organs. And yeah, also change the name of my YouTube channel. Now, I am disappointed with Spider-Man No Way Home. Andrew and Toby weren't there. Spider-Man hangs out with a bunch of orphans. The story was so bad, there was actually no story. Tom Holland is actually not even in the movie. We just went to a cinema and watched the black screen for two straight hours. Now that's a creative way to say spoiler alert. Now that the broke Donnies are gone. I loved it so much, it was so good, it was better than the time Mark Ruffalo came to my hospital to kiss me on the forehead just to realize that I was in fact not the Make-A-Wish kid and he had in fact died weeks ago. Now, fast forward to last week when I was one of the very few fortunate people who had a whole friend group pumped and ready to go to release day. It's crazy to think that even though I watched it in the afternoon, I was probably one of the very first thousands if not millions of people to see it. Out of 7.5 billion people, if I could do the math, which, uh, let's be fair, I repeated grade 2 like three times, that would be probably a little over 1% of the population, which I think is very, very special to me on a personal level. I can't lie, this movie is the most hyped I've ever been to go to a cinema. Now, I had hordes of people swarm me at the start of the year telling me how they were going to go for this event. Now fast forward to December 16 and that finally happens. People actually did keep their promises. Did it live up to the hype? Did it set the bar for Spider-Man movies? Did I walk into the movies like a 12 year old? Guess we're here to answer those questions. Fortnite have messed up. Spider-Man's new mythic web ability is- Uncle Ben, what have I done? This is one of the best movies I've ever watched. And this is coming from a guy who watches Spider-Man all day, all night, alright? I don't know why, but I've- always found Tom's Spider-Man the most appealing. John Watts' take on the character is so reminiscent of Stan Lee's original run for Spider-Man. Watts' Spider-Man isn't a man that's constantly looking in the past to look for guidance for the future. He's not constantly going back to Uncle Ben for his inspiration, instead being inspired by the superhero community around him. Which makes sense seeing that Spider-Man is now in the MCU. If you read Stan's original run, that's the tone that's been set for Peter's high school life. Even the great power comes with great responsibility line didn't even originally come from o Uncle Ben. It's also refreshing after Andrew and Toby's pretty similar performance. Andrew actively hunting down the killer in his movie, and Toby just always finding inspiration from Uncle Ben. Anyway, why am I telling you all of this? I think this movie, albeit to an extreme degree, echoes the transition between high school and university era in Peter's life. It's here where we see MCU Spidey face the effects of his heroics onto his life to end towards others. He finally has to make the tough choices and he finally he finally has to make the tough choices and much like us has to grow up. That's why I find the plot, albeit somber, pretty satisfying. It stays true to the source material. <laughs> Uncle Ben, what have I done? Another brilliant solution that this movie provides is the Iron Man Jr. criticism that the home movies receive. I used to think it was a bad addition to the movies. I've always liked it when Spider-Man struggles on his own to make his own equipment rather than relying on a glorified sugar daddy. 
but when you look past it, the heart of the story is always Peter struggling with his responsibility, which I think is far more relatable than money, troubles, or having a shit life. Sorry to say this, but an average teenager doesn't have these struggles. Teenagers don't really face the consequences of every action they make. Now, in saying this, this movie, again, is a transition phase for Peter from teenager to young adult. So, the Iron Man Jr. argument is not only made obsolete, but is done, but is solved in the most best possible way possible for those soppy twats that keep complaining about it. And it also manages to facilitate the plot as well, I guess. Also, somehow they made the classic suit look great. I was never a fan of the classic suit. Controversial take, but I always thought that the Raimi suit was a bit... Eh. Personally, more of a bells and whistles type guy. I always was a fan of the Amazing Spider-Man redesign of the suit. Even in the PS4 game, I always preferred the advanced suit over the classic. But somehow, this movie changed my opinion on it. The one Tom makes by himself at the end won me over. It just... worked? I really don't know how they did it, but hats off to the costume design team. Uncle Ben, what if I- No, actually, I'll allow it. Now, the crossover. It was handled brilliantly. Oh, you didn't know Toby and Andrew were in it? As a wise man once said, I missed the part where that's my problem. The film did just what I expected it to do. Since this film is centered around Tom's portrayal of the character, I really didn't expect Toby and Andrew were going to be that important to the movie. Heck, I didn't even know they were going to be in the movie until this guy sitting next to me showed me a clip from 123 Movies. Andrew and Toby aren't main characters. Their main function is a little more important than the supporting cast, i.e. Zendaya and Jacob. Since this Tom doesn't have an Uncle Ben to look back to for guidance, and neither does he have a Tony Stank that can help him out, the only ones between him and the murder of Green Goblin is Toby and Andrew's past experiences and wisdom. I think this is perfect for the movie, as it provides closure to Andrew's character and provides Toby with the natural next step to his character evolution, while still servicing the plot. Uh. I don't think there's much left to say about this movie. If you enjoyed it, good on you. And if you didn't, this is why your father left. Um, peace out. I.